welcome back to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Phil. Or if it's your first time watching my channel then, welcome. And if you haven't yet, please do hit that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know every time I upload another video. Now before we get started today, I want to say a massive thank you to my friend Lee over at Lee's Creature Features. I'm sure you guys have heard of his channel and familiar with that, but if not, do go and check it out. He reached out to me uh, to basically help him collab with a video of his of how to help out UK zoos. Um, if you don't know, I am a UK zookeeper. Um, and he knows it, so yeah, he asked if I would be interested in collabing with him on a video all about that. And I'll put a link to that video down in the description. Watch it, fantastic video. Thanks a lot, Lee, uh, for reaching out to me and for that. There are many ways to help out your local zoo. Um, um, and I go through just a few of the ideas that we do at my zoo, uh, such as donations, adoptions, Amazon wish list. So but also, hopefully, since we've done that video, um, or since I sent the clips in, the, the government have announced that hopefully, if everything goes right, from the 12th of April, UK zoos, or at least the outdoor ones, can reopen. So it's just the outdoor ones. So you, all the closed or indoor ones, so indoor zoos, aquariums, will have to remain shut, unfortunately. Um, I think until the 17th of May is the current date, but they will be allowed to reopen. So they will definitely still need help. But as will all zoos still need much, much help. When they do reopen, when we can reopen, one of the best ways, go and visit. Book your tickets to go and visit your good local zoo. So, but one of other best ways if you can't support financially is just sharing their content that someone else may see may be able to support them financially but enough of that i say go and check out that video that they done it's a fantastic one okay i'll put the link down in the description on on with today's topic or video what we're going to do is have a look at some beetle maintenance in particular beetle larvae maintenance so let's go ahead take a look Right, okay, so here we've got my tub of Mechanorina toquata ugandensis larvae. And so to maintain them, I just sift through uh, kind of every few weeks or so. Uh, so I'll just sift through, take out any larvae that I do see. I normally miss a few, uh, but it gives a good chance to obviously count them up, make sure they're doing the right uh, point on weight as well, uh, make sure they are growing bigger. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll also be removing anything like earthworms that I might find or even little centipedes. Basically anything that shouldn't be in the substrate. And that one also gives me a good opportunity basically to fill the substrate and make sure that it's the right, correct amount of moisture in there. So you kind of want it basically compost bag moist is kind of what we tend to say. So moist enough that if you squeeze it together it holds its shape but it doesn't, you can't squeeze out any water. If you manage to squeeze out any water out of the substrate, it is far too wet. And likewise, if you squeeze it together and it doesn't hold together whatsoever, it's probably far too dry uh, for a lot of species. And then it's a good opportunity to basically mix all the substrate in, make sure that you've actually got plenty of food for the larvae, which consists of decaying organic matter, decaying leaves, uh, decaying wood, all these sorts of things so it gives you a good opportunity to make sure that that's there you can do this to obviously find any eggs as well and also like I say to, to find larvae so when you get fruit beetles if you buy them as adults put them in a breeding container and then after a few weeks maybe a month maybe a month and a half go rolling through to see if you've got any eggs and or any larvae or if you buy larvae just check on them like I say every few weeks or so um, once a month is normally fine, depends how many larvae you've got, the size of your container, how deep your substrate is and all that, so it does vary and stuff, so you have to get yourself into a good routine that works for you in terms of sort of sifting through and finding out what is in your substrate. And as I say, main sure as well that if they're ones that can be cannibalistic, they then obviously need to be kept by themselves. So here I'm just making up the, uh, the substrate back up now so it's breaking up a shiitake block so this is a next block used for growing shiitake mushrooms and um, they can buy from a few different places 
So, and it's uh, absolutely perfect, I find, for beetle larvae, as well as other things like millipedes and isopods, cockroaches. So, I also uh, bring up some rotten wood that I have collected myself. And, uh, and I add, you know, you want to add enough in here for them. You know, but uh, I do need to go and get some more rotten wood. So I didn't have a huge, huge amount in my store. So I need to actually uh, go back out and collect. And same with kind of any kind of leaf litter as well. So adding decayed leaf litter. And this you can go out and collect yourself. Um, so go to local deciduous forest. You know, find oak, beech trees, things like that. As long as it's not conifer or pine. Has to be deciduous. Take away the top layer. And then that's absolutely perfect underneath there. Or you can buy it in yourself. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the look at how I maintain my beetle larvae. There's a few different ways. Some people have different ideas when it comes to the substrate. I'm going to be experimenting with some other ones. I'm looking into flake soil. A lot of people do say it's better. Um, I've never used it yet. I've been looking at a couple of recipes. And I've seen actually someone, or the supplier shop put up that they've got some bags available for sale. So I might have to buy a bag or two to try it out and see what I think to it, but also have a go at making it myself, which will be cheaper. So, but let me know, do you keep beetles and stuff? If you do and you've got larvae, especially maybe some of the large ones like the rhino beetles and stuff, what do you use? What substrates do you use? And so currently, it's, like I say, it's a mixture of organic compost along with leaf mulch, rotten wood, shiitake blocks. That's what I use, but experimentation is always key and trying to come up with different things I also know someone who actually uh, uses a lot of animal manure in with theirs um, especially camelids so things like alpaca and stuff they'll actually put into uh, into their substrate mix maybe that's something so, but if you did enjoy this video please do give it a thumbs up so please do put some comments down below with all that sort of stuff if you do keep beetles and stuff and also, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. And one last final thank you to Lee at Lee's Creature Features for that video, for that collab. Thanks again, mate. Other than that, stay safe, and I'll see you next Sunday. Keep rocking.